I'm Shimon Mangazi with Business Time on Times. It is a magazine program where we bring you business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. In the program today, Malawi and South Sudan business players exchange notes to strengthen trade among the two nations. Also in the program, the manufacturing sector should brace for tough times as the electricity generation company is struggling to restore generation capacity. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned. The Malawi Investment and Trade Center has called on close cooperation among businesses in Malawi if the country is to satisfy the huge demand for local products in South Sudan. MITC Board Chairman Kara Chokoto was speaking in Lilongwe on Monday during a meeting between local businesses and their South Sudanese counterparts. The South Sudan delegation was in Malawi to appreciate sources of their imported commodities from Malawi. Chokoto explains. It's a little while ago, uh, Malawi and South Sudan uh, signed an MOU, uh, which will finally, uh, at some point, will develop into a full trade agreement. Um, and in this uh, MOU, essentially, there are export opportunities for Malawi. Um, so there are several products that we can export, um, ranging from maize flour to soybeans, uh, rice, groundnuts, uh, chickpeas, and, and other things. Um, so there are all those opportunities. But as you know, as a country, we also have an investment drive. Um, we are looking for investments, uh, foreign direct investment in all sorts of sectors. Uh, we've got a full compendium that uh, presents opportunities. So we've got that MOU, uh, trying to develop the trade between Malawi and South Sudan. Uh, this also talks to the intra-Africa um, uh, trade agreement. Uh, all of us are, are, are looking at the Africa continental free trade area and developing it. So this is an example, actually, of, of you know intra-Africa trade. Um, and Malawi and South Sudan are working uh, rigorously to, to, to develop this uh, further from the MOU. We have had, actually, um, Product, sec product uh, specific uh, meetings and we'll continue to have those. Um, in a sense, we, we have faith that we can actually supply. I think one of the major issues that we often have in Malawi is the issue of aggregation. Um, and aggregation, if we simplify it to its smallest uh, denominator, is talking about people uh, working together, putting their resources together, and that's what we're talking about. So uh, essentially, if private sector, uh, even the small players, we've got uh, an, uh, a section within the Ministry of Trade looking at SMEs. Um, we, we, we promote uh, training for, for, for SMEs, uh, whether it is in standards, um, export pricing, and so on. So all these efforts are trying to say, as private sector, if people can come together, pull their resources together, pull their production together, um, we should be able to satisfy um, uh, these, these particular demands. I think a case in point um, that is very visible. Uh, you will note how soya production has surged in Malawi. Once we had the market and ev everybody got interested, there was a lot of production of soya. Why not for maize flour? Why not for, for, for all the other products that are being demanded by South Sudan? We can do it as a country. Malawi will continue experiencing intermittent power supply in the days to come as electricity generation company Ejenko is still finding it tough to restore power at Kabijira Power Station. Kabijira Power Station has the capacity to feed about 130 megawatts into the national grid. Eric Msikiti has the details in this report. The station was shut down on Monday last week following damages to some of the equipment in the aftermath of Cyclone Anna. 
Strong winds and heavy rains destroyed property worth millions of kwacha, including a dike on the Shiri River, which Ijenko uses to divert water into the Kapichira Dam for energy generation. As of Monday, it was still unclear when the machines would be restored and how much the work would cost. In an interview after touring the plant on Monday, Ijenko Chief Executive Officer William Liabunya rated the situation as a disaster. Liabunya told journalists that there was need for proper planning and extensive rehabilitation to bring the station back to life. As you may have seen and as you can see from my background, um, there has been a disaster here at Kapishira. And we can say that the whole dam is damaged. Now you can see that water is no longer coming to the intake where we need the water to go to the machines. But now the water has gone to its natural course after damaging the training dike that we had at the dam to direct the water to the intake. That training dike was washed away. And in the process, the dam um, where we had the fuse plug, which was the weak point of the dam wall, has also been washed away. And in the process, the dam main wall has partially also been washed away. So we can say that uh, Kapichira Dam is no longer there. And uh, in the process, we cannot run the machines. And it's uh, quite a disaster, so to say. Kapichira was designed for to produce 129.6 megawatts, close to 130 megawatts. So all that power, 130 megawatts, cannot be supplied to ESCOM as of now. And therefore, the country has been deprived of 130 megawatts, which um, in the near future, before we repair the dam, we'll see that we'll be unable to run Kapichi land, we'll be unable to produce this 130 megawatts. We cannot say we have started maintenance yet. This is massive work. As you have seen, the training dike is not, no small job. Even the wall, the, the, the dam wall, the fuse plug, it's no small job. And as you have seen, because of that, there's been a lot of sand that has come on the dam. We need to clear that dam so that we can have water coming to the intake when we construct the dike. Those are very extens extensive work and uh, we require proper planning. We need to properly plan the work and uh, look at the resources that are required. This is not a work that a Jenko on its own can manage to, 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 to execute. The cost um, is so massive. And uh, therefore, we are at the planning stages of now. We have consulted a few people around, our engineers, to work out with the, the possible contractors that can do the work, that we can have the estimates of the, the cost estimates, how much it will require, and also the time estimates, how much time it will require to reconstruct the work. So as of now, we haven't started the works as such. He said the company was yet to identify a consultant to assess the magnitude of the damage and a possible cost for rehabilitation. The dam was uh, constructed in the 1990s as this power station was commissioned in uh, um, 2000, year 2000. And uh, as uh, we had in 2020 during the cyclone Idai, we lost the dike, the tip of the dike was lost. and. Uh, we were still repairing uh, the dam, the, the dike, because uh, we had noted that there are some weaknesses. It was all constructed by earth and rock, and therefore we made a new design to say we should put in um, steel reinforcement as well as uh, concrete reinforcement so that it become much stronger. But uh, that work had not been completed yet, and it's when now we are seeing this uh, wash away that has come. What we're looking at and in our plans as we we're discussing um, is that we want to do phase one where we want to restore the works that we can produce electricity. So we'll have the phase one where we can restore it to the level that it was. But during the, that time after we, we have restored, we'll go into redesigning. We'll engage a consultant that we can redesign the dam to the level that it can withstand the current um, cyclones, the current climate, the cli current uh, rainfalls that are coming, so that at a proper time now, when we are fully prepared with enough resources, we can do a proper shutdown and do reconstruction according to the new designs that it can withstand 
the current climatic conditions. The electricity that Kapichira Falls generates reaches out to over 52,000 households. But those households will no longer have reliable supply of electricity as the power station that supplies them with electricity is now relying on other power plants to meet its electricity needs. In 2020, Ijenko spent over 5 billion kwacha when Cyclone Idai hit. This is Business Time on Times. We'll be right back. Jombe Foods Limited has announced an expansion in its products on the local market following commencement of sugar packaging operations at its factory in Blanta. The company is importing the product from India and is being packaged in 5 gram packets targeting the hotel sector. This follows the introduction of salt packaging operations in 2021. Gary Samati reports. Jobe Food Limited has recently ventured into new businesses. The company, which was commonly known for tea production, has expanded into rice, sugar, and salt production. However, General Manager for Jombe Food Limited, Maskud Bora, says the company's emergence into the basic commodities trade has exposed the competitive nature of the business. In an interview, he said it is not easy to penetrate into such businesses. Actually, you see, uh, Chombe was initially uh, a pack packaging company, tea. Basically, it was on tea, tea blending and packaging company. We have our plantations here. We blend and pack it. But uh, slowly, the people started demanding us that why don't you go for other consumer goods also, which is needed for the common people, you see. Then we started thinking that uh, what are the indigenous items of uh, Malawi? We got it Kilombero. You know, Kilombero rice is worldwide popular. Today, Kilombero rice is, you know, you will find it in UK, United Kingdom. So we would like to slowly come down to a rice divisions. And uh, we started packaging rice, Kilombero, Superfire, in our different, different pouches, in 500 grams, 1 kg, up to 5 kg, we are packaging. So uh, we, we thought that this is a necessity product for everyone. The rice is needed. Then we thought we should go for another very important, this is a salt. Without salt, no food can be cooked, you know, a salt is indispensable. And we also thought how to give a quality salt. Today you find in the market a lot of salt, but I am very sorry to say that a lot of salt does not, you know, have the real ingredients which it's supposed to be. In that case, we are really Following, we are concentrating that Malawi Bureau of Standard, what is the, you know, PPM. And we found the right salt for, the, for our people. So that, as I said to you before, that this salt is a refined salt. Three times we refined it. It has got 90 PPM of iodines. It has got magnesium. It has got, you know, calcium. Some of the things are very much needed for the human health. You know, so that's why this we have uh, we launched this. Then we are also thinking that some other products, as I said, the sugar. Sugar is here. In fact, I'm not saying sugar is new. Sugar we are doing in a small packaging. You know, somewhere you go, a person cannot be afford to make a 500 grams also packet. He can just buy at least a 5 grams or a 10 grams packet or a 50 grams packet so that it is easy for them to buy it. You see, I have, uh, when we are moving all around, then uh, when you keep, uh, this is a very basic thing, when you keep uh, some sugar in a pot, you know, in, in a pot, sugar pot, you know, and uh, putting with it uh, with a spoon. Sometimes when you see somebody take a spoon, and that spoon is become, you know, putting it into the tea, you can't again go back to the, with that spoon to the sugar, with sugar will take the moisture. Some problems are there. When you open, keep, keep sugar open, you know, you lose some of the strength of sugar. And uh, everybody wants any hygiene. Now the days has come up hygiene, food, 
values are very important. People think that is the salt is clean or not, it is properly done or not. So looking at the quality control, uh, what you are saying is very important. Yes, competition in the market with the big, uh, I don't want to say the names of the other brands, because yes, uh, we are thinking that uh, not that much about the profitability. See, profitability is important, but we have got some causes for the social responsibility. You are making money everywhere. It doesn't mean that you're making tea money, you're making everywhere money. But the social responsibility speaks we should also give. You may not be having too much of profit, but we are going to cater it for the tourism sectors. Now the Malawi tourism is coming up in that way. And our brand is a very strong brand. Now I believe, I believe we will do able to do it and people will go for the quality. Bora further urged Malawians to nonetheless stick to buying these Malawian commodities to support the buy Malawi strategy. He says doing so will have an advantage to the country's economy. Sir, today the day has come, you see the economy is going. I'm coming to the economy. I'm actually a student of economics. Today is a crisis moment coming and we have to keep our money among us. You know, I don't want to say any brand's name here. Some tea you are buying, the money is going to South Africa. Some tea you are buying, the money is going to India. Some tea you are buying, the money is going to Zimbabwe. But you buy Malawi tea, you buy Chombe tea, the money is with us. It is a Malawian based company. We have got 100% Malawian people working with us. Of course, except Maksud. <laughs> Maybe I am expatriate, but my 100% people are working, are Malawian people. And the, that's why what your question is very relevant. Now it is the Bai Malawi concept is coming up in a big way and we have to be on this because for our survival. If we don't do it, if we are not producing our own indigenous products and getting it sold by our people and making it export market in the same time. In fact, our tea is already being, lots of good inquiries are coming from Chombe uh, in the uh, uh, ex export market. Our tea is being sold by Amazon, you know. Amazon is selling. One of the American buyer, he buys it from here, and he sells it to American from uh, from uh, in, in from America. He has got a uh, shop in Houston, in the U.S., and he's selling Sombe tea. So that's a pride of us. It's a pride of Malawi. We are feeling so proud uh, that uh, we are producing our tea is being sold by an American gentleman in U.S. through Amazon. So it's a pride of us. I believe that we must do it. We have to produce our all indigenous. We have tomato. We can do the tomato ketchup. Why not? We have peanuts. The best peanuts in the world, where aflatoxin level is much lower than the other peanuts. We can do the peanuts butter. So all we are thinking, our mind process is that, that we have to cater the right stuff to Malawians from our own goods. That's why I, 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 I'm fully supporting your views that we should go for the Bai Malawi concept. The company launched Chombe Table Salt and Sugar on Tuesday. According to Bora, the Malawi Bureau of Standards has certified the products. Representatives of National Bank of Malawi are speaking highly about the Kwatu Pamo promotion, which increased the usage of its digital payment platform, Mo626, by 20% in January. This came out recently when the bank conducted the first draw of the promotion in Blanta. More in this report. National Bank Head of Digital Financial Services, William Kaunda, said the main aim of the promotion was to encourage Malawi Housing Corporation tenants and other people to pay their house rentals, application fees, and ground rentals through the platform. So far, the Papua to promotion has been quite, quite, quite interesting, and we uh, have seen quite a good response from our customers. We launched it on 1st of December, and uh, uh, what we've done today is to draw for the month of December. And, and as you've seen for yourself, uh, uh, some 26 uh, customers have walked away with various uh, prices. Three have walked away with the, uh, a one-month rent of paid for by the bank, and three have walked away with 50,000 voucher each. Uh, voucher for those that paid ground rentals, and then uh, 20 I walked away with various consolation prices, so uh, coffee sheets and, and other drinking bottles, or branded National Bank of Malawi. And we're quite happy with the, uh, the output uh, and the 
Christmases that we've seen so far. We've seen a, a change on, 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 the, on the movement. Uh, mind you, when we started all this partnership with the Mara Housing, we had our customers going to service centers to make payments. They were not using our digital channels. So now we want to move them from service centers to digital channels. Because we noted that some were traveling long distances to go and make payments at our service centers. So uh, being the first month, what we noted is a growth of not less than 20% of people migrating from usage of, uh, of, of going to a service center to using this platform. Uh, and uh, already, uh, as we are seeing in January, there will be more uh, responses because uh, perhaps that was the first month, but we do expect a growth, uh, a very significant growth. And going to the future, we also are uh, uh, anticipating quite a number of changes uh, in the way our customers are making payments to Mara Housing Corporation. Malawi Housing Corporation Public Relations Officer Enestina Lunguzi indicated that the promotion increased the rental payments in the month. We are excited um, as my housing corporation because uh, through, this, uh, through this exercise we have seen an increase in rental payment, uh, both in ground rent and house rent. So we are excited and we are happy that you know, using this platform people have been able to win different prizes as you have seen. With more 626 people are able to pay uh, at the comfort of their homes, uh, it's quick. Uh, it's convenient, uh, so we have seen that uh, uh, probably, especially that this was done during the festive season where, when the banks are full, we've seen that indeed there's been an increase and we have as a commission. During the draw, three lucky customers won one month house rent paid by the bank and three customers got 50,000 kwacha shopping vouchers for paying ground rent. Other 20 customers won NBM branded items, but in the final draw, one lucky customer will win six months worth of house rent paid for by the bank, and one ground rent customer will win 500,000 kwacha. With that item, we have come to the end of today's edition of Business Time. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Chimo Mangazi, but always remember, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Bye for now.